Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Road to Grandmaster series. This is the seventh round recap uh, of my tournament here in Madrid, Spain. And uh, it's quite a tournament thus far. Got four and a half points out of six. My uh, games have gone win, draw, win, draw, win, draw. Uh, so, you know, just by the law of uh, whatever law I just invented in this recap, that means I'm going to win this game. On a serious note, uh, I need to score two points. I need to get six and a half points out of nine to earn a norm. Uh, these 10 uh, player closed events are always calculated ahead of time. All the criteria are, uh, is met. And, um, you know, you just got to score the amount of points you got to score. And um, now I'm playing, I've played all the grandmasters. Now I have to play the young IMs who are almost grandmaster, who are just as hungry as I am. Uh, and uh, in this round, I was playing somebody named uh, Aaron Alonso uh from spain rated 2460 and what's funny is that uh he's having a bad event like he's in eighth place in the group but he's still extremely high rated he just you know sometimes in these events like something doesn't go your way um so in this game i was really conflicted first of all i came to the game 14 minutes late uh that's not why i was conflicted uh, but it was a very uh, late start of the morning. I slept very poorly. People upstairs were making noise until 5 a.m. It was actually horrible. Uh, I'm never going to do Airbnb again for these tournaments. Nothing. Well, there's plenty of things wrong with Airbnb. But um, I remember there was like a golden age of Airbnb. And now it's just awful. You, like, you just get garbage neighbors. and it, I mean, it's just a mess. Um, so I didn't have a lot of time to prepare. Um, and all I knew about this guy is that he likes to play symmetrical English uh, against d4. He likes to play knight f6, e6. So I was like, okay, I can play like a queen's pawn game. And then I, I literally got to the board and just said, I'm just going to improvise. I like, I, I didn't prepare anything at all. Uh, and I played knight f3. You know, he played c5. You know, if I was a if I was an e4 player, obviously I can play e4. I can turn this into a symmetrical English and try to play something there. And I just played like e3, d4. I mean, I I literally have never played this opening in my life. Uh, I know very limited things about it. And I just kind of said, all right, prep out the window. Let's play chess. Uh, he already spent a bunch of time. He spent a bunch of time. He spent like, uh, spent eight minutes moving his knight, which is kind of wild. Uh, he was just trying to like probably decide, you know, does he want to play with two pawns in the center or what? Because he definitely wasn't expecting what I played. Uh, d4, e6, and now bishop d3. And, you know, black generally will play something like b6 here, I'll castle, bishop b7, b3, knight c6, bishop b2. And this is just like a Kali, is what this is called. This is like the, the Kali system. And I had nothing prepared here at all. Uh, again, not a lot of sleep. Sometimes you got to run on fumes. He took and played b6. And I decided around here, I'm going to put my bishop on f4 and castle. So this will be the position after we play seven and a half moves. And this actually looks, and by the way, my upstairs neighbors are still back. Like I can hear, like the ceiling is vibrating. It's unbelievable. I don't know what, it sounds like elephants are dragging furniture across the chair. Like their, their feet are heavy. It, they're playing like a game where you have to slide as many chairs as possible across the floor in the shortest amount of time. It's like 2 a.m. chairs were dragging. I mean, it was in, and they're still making noise. Anyway, um, it's driving me nuts. You, you can't hear it. You're lucky, but I, I'm losing my mind. Thank God I'm going home tomorrow uh, or, yeah, whenever that is. Um, castles, and I just want to point out that this position also could have been reached by uh, a London move order, knight f6, bishop f4, e6, e3, like c5, for example, uh, knight f3, b6, knight d2, and then let's say my opponent decided to take bishop b7, c3, something like bishop b7, bishop d3, castle, castle, okay? So look at this position, all right? And now look at the position that happens uh, in the game, very similar. Right, c3, knight d2 on the way. So he castles. I play h3 to get my bishop some space. I don't have to, but it's just kind of a nice move. And then I play knight d2 and I play c3. I play a4 and he goes here. 
up until this point, um, and I and just so you understand, I played A4 to control B5, right? So up until this point, everything is sort of known. Um, at least, like, we know where to put our pieces. But I don't have a lot of experience playing the structure, which is very important in chess. And so I kind of have to figure out the middle game plan on my own while also considering, like, what does my opponent want to do, right? Um, here I, I was like, I think he's going to move his rook, and then I think he's going to put something on F8. And I kind of want to go target the h7 pawn to make him push and then come back so that he kind of weakens his king. So that's why I played queen c2. It's not a great move. Uh, not, not you know, I, I need to make useful moves like bishop here to get out of the way of the knight. And also to get out of the way of the pawn if it ever moves forward. I should have played bishop h2 and then went on a big plan. And then here I played probably the stupidest move of the whole tournament that I've played. Then I tried to follow it up with another really stupid move later in this game. But I'm, I'm telling you, some, this lack of sleep and general agitation absolutely affected me. Mm. Um, I played a move here that was so stupid, it bothered me the rest of the game. And yet, according to the engine, the position is so stable... It doesn't really matter. Basically, he played rook c8, right? And I saw, oh, he wants to go knight d5, attacking my bishop. And then when I move my bishop, he wants to play knight b4. Yeah, because if I take, he's going to take my queen, and then he's going to get in. Like, for example, rook b1 is bad, because black plays knight d5. Uh, or, I, 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 to be honest, black can't even play that, because bishop h7. I guess, like, I, I imagined it in a slightly different version. I point is the knight would come here. And I just, for some reason, played this move. Now, to the untrained eye, this move looks like just a move. They, you know, you don't... This move is so idiotic. Like, I can't even begin... I played this move just, like, automatically, because I was like, oh, he put his rook there on the C file, so I'm gonna also... This move is so stupid. It's so stupid. Luckily, it doesn't, like, lose any, you know, massive advantage. There is literally... Why is my rook behind two pieces? Like, if my rook should be anywhere, it's e1, okay? It, you know, my rook should be here, behind my other rook. Because he's probably going to play e5. I played rook c1, and then I literally stared at it and was like... What is wrong with me? But I guess I'm overdue. I mean, I've played a lot of really good chess in this event, and I'm overdue. I mean, I'm overdue to do something stupid. Um, and, you know, I will. I'm not going to play perfect chess. So he went rook e8, right? I played bishop h2, but again, I could have played this move last move. So rook c1 was a waste of time. Uh, and here things started spiraling a bit. I played my plan of knight g5. There's a very cool way to get mated here, h6. And uh, bishop h7 is mate. Because either he takes with the knight and gets mated, or knight f7 is mate, which is pretty cool. Um, but he went here, and then I, I went here. He traded, played queen c6. And at this point, I'm, during the game, I'm thinking, oh, I'm much worse. Oh, this is horrible. I mean, I played rook c1, which is already brain dead. He's threatening to mate me, right? Like, he's threatening to just play f5, and I resign. He's forcing me to play f3, which just looks like a terrible move. And I'm down 26 minutes on the clock. So I'm down 26 minutes on the clock. I didn't sleep well. Uh, I played rook c1. I played an opening I don't know how to play, and I'm paying for it. All right. And that's the cards that we've been dealt by the chess gods of this game. And still, with all of that in mind, like I feel, I feel as though me from a few years ago would have just lost this game in the next five moves. Um, however, I didn't do that. And I said, okay, look, he's going to start. I was getting, a, like, a sense from him, his energy. He knew he was kind of taking over the game. Uh, and, uh, and he was feeling the, the nerves, you know, like, oh, whoa. I got to, you know, now I have to make something happen. So he played uh, E5 in 10 minutes, which is kind of crazy because, like, what else can you possibly play here? I mean, he spent 10 minutes, right? So already I knew he was feeling a bit of the jitters. I very quickly took, and I blitzed out the next move, which was the best move, which is just getting my king off of this diagonal that he opened up. And you see, 
sometimes my intuition is really smart. Like, I'm sitting there going, he's going to play e5, I'm going to take, I'm going to play king h1. Like, I'm not even going to think. I'm going to let him come to me. So now I'm thinking his best move is f5, right? Plays that move. Five minutes. I play knight d2 because I, I want to, you know, go this way. And the most insane thing is the engine on chess.com events gives this position as an advantage for white. As you can tell from my previous few moves, like rook c1, wasting time, you know, getting like completely nothing here, forced to move, weaken my king. I'm thinking I'm worse. I'm thinking it's like minus 0.8 because... My position feels like garbage. He's going to go knight c5. He's going to try to play e4. But then here, you know, I, I start thinking more positively, right? He plays queen f6. He spends another eight minutes. So now we're actually pretty even on the clock. And I'm just thinking like, okay, you know, he's going to come down and he's going to try to attack me. I got to be ready for him. So now I'm going to double my rooks on the e-file. I'm going to play rook e2. But what's crazy, and I thought about this move during the game, but like, b4 and the idea is he can't take i can't take with the pawn because i would lose my queen but i can play queen b3 check and i win uh, his bishop but more than anything I'm, I'm just controlling space on the queen side now again this engine when you start entering moves gets dumber so it's not as good as the you know actual engine that is observing your games uh like b4 is actually a very good move and my plan is just to play like knight c4 and keep improving another is bishop f1 but i would never play that move i I don't even know what it does. I, I, I straight up don't know what that... Yeah, the engine wants me to play bishop f1, bishop g1. Like, yeah, no, not happening. Uh, I thought I played fine, doubling my rooks. He went rook e7, and again, at this point, I'm, I, I still, you know, I'm getting close on time. It's not like 25 minutes anymore. It's six minutes, but I'm still very pessimistic. I really don't like my position. I don't like how I've played. The only thing that I'm sort of like preserving hope for here is like, I've played very well this tournament, and winning a chess game is really hard. I mean, as long as your opponent doesn't have an aneurysm. And I played queen b1 just because I didn't really know what to do. Honestly, I wanted him to come forward somehow, and he did. Uh, I, I backed up again. Again, I'm sort of playing possum here. Like, I, I, I don't control the game very well. Um, but I was thinking that if I, like, move over here, he's going to start playing g5, h5. And I really didn't like that. Uh, so I decided I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my queen and bishop in the same diagonal. And he played a5, and I immediately was like, uh, that's a bad move. Because he just gave me the light squares. And right away, whoop, and I'm going to b5. And this is kind of when I like, was like, oh, you see, everybody's human. I mean, I played like an idiot for a few moves, and I'm worse. But he's human too. And I got a second wind. And I caught him. He went knight c5 and completely missed my counter shot. And when I played my counter shot, I said, I'm winning this game. Like, I'm, I'm going to win. Out of nowhere. He missed knight c4. He missed that I can basically just ignore both things. And I'm threatening to take his bishop. And once I take his bishop, I'm threatening to take on e5. If he takes here, I take. His bishop is hanging. Plays bishop by 6 I take with a queen. I completely unpin myself. So the only other thing I had to calculate here was this move e4 which I did. Knight takes d6 just wins. For example, knight d3 I can take on c8. Uh, I also can sack my queen, which is pretty cool. And I can also sack my queen in another line, this line. Knight d6, he cannot take with the queen. Uh, if he takes here, I take his rook, is what I thought. Okay, the engine gives something even better. Ah, yeah, yeah, there's like rook takes e5. And I just, I sacrifice my queen, and it's pretty nasty. And then I can play like bishop f4 and stuff, and I can also take his rook. So... I, uh, yeah, I thought I was just going to win. And then he went here. Now, this move makes sense. But notice that I'm up two minutes now. So the game has completely changed. So I, I am now up two minutes with an advantage out of nowhere. And this is sort of the way the tournament has, has been going in the sense of I'm just, like, playing the game, you know? I'm playing the game. Like, every there's no game that's just start-to-finish domination. Um, oh. This water is incredible. I think they told me that um, Real Madrid players drink this water. Solan de Cabras. I don't know. But I do know Spain has more alimentaciones than New York. You just walk down the street here in Madrid. There's just like a little corner store. It's amazing. A little bodega is what we call them in uh, back home. 
Anyway, long story short, we get here, and I'm like, dude, I'm straight up, I have the bishop pair, and I'm completely, like, all his pawn play is gone. And I thought about playing more passively to prevent e4. It's not a bad move, but I went here, and here's something really weird happened. So, he goes e4, and I, I didn't take it. I think I didn't take it. Well, if he takes, I just give up my rook, and I'm going to win his bishop and his knight. But maybe I was worried about, like, f3? Like, maybe, and, and if I try to defend f3, he takes on e4, and then he's doing well? I don't exactly know, to be honest. I think, like, the prospect of getting such a good position, so, like, out of nowhere kind of shocked me. I don't really know why I didn't take. I it, Again, this game was, like, I think the circumstances of this game... Given the lack of sleep, given the bad opening, it, it opened up the door to old Gotham. I like kind of relapsed to how I used to play, not before, like before this tournament two years ago. And, and, and I just sort of go a little deer in the headlights sometimes. Like it's a critical moment, 10 minutes each, tense position. It's like a rapid game, you know? And um, yeah, I should just keep it simple, but. I went b4, which I thought was also not bad. I, I, I'm dislodging his knight from the defense of the center. He went here, which was a really nice move. Now his rook attacks my pawn. Now I took, and then I took, and I pinned his, his rook to his king, thinking that um, I'm going to play like rook c2 and rook c1. I'm just going to keep stockpiling. Uh, but he just defended himself. I don't have anything here, and as you can see from my clock, I think I was sort of disturbed by the fact that I didn't have any immediate win. Uh, because, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I played rook here, rook, uh, queen here, and uh, yeah, here I almost lost the game. I had calculated bishop here, queen f6, e5, disconnecting the queen from the defense of the rook, and there's this. There's rook takes h3. And I saw that at the board and was like, wait a minute. If I ever push, his rook takes my pawn because of his bishop. That's so random. It's like almost easier to see on a chess.com board than a, than a big physical board. And a big physical board, you're like sitting there, you're going, oh, wow, look at all these diagonals. I didn't know, I didn't know bishops could move like that. Um... So I decide, okay, look, I'm going to trade some pieces before we lose this game. Let's trade some pieces. And now we're just going to make a draw. Um, I'm going to go bishop d7. I'm going to attack the knight, which is defending this pawn. Uh, he might play like knight c5. I don't know. And then um, I calculated this. Bishop f4, threatening a fork. He takes my bishop, but then I go here. I'm threatening his knight. His knight can't move because I fork. So bishop e4, rook d7, and, you know, rook d2 or something, and it's just a draw. I mean, it's not like a super pleasant position, but it's just a draw. So I calculated bishop d7, and then I, you know, I was looking at bishop d7, king f6, bishop e6, king e6, bishop f4, rook c4. I thought, okay, I'm slightly worse, but I'm going to defend this pawn, and he's going to go here, and I'll go like, I don't know, bishop d2. But I didn't, somehow I, I was afraid of losing my pawn on g2. I saw this, again, with like how much, four minutes on the clock. And I said, okay, I'm going to go here instead, which is fine. And the plan is bishop b6. And he went here. And his point is that if I play bishop b6, he's going to take, take, and even advance his pawn. And at the very least, he's going to get to this endgame where only black can win because his three pawns are together and mine are not. And so he plays bishop c6. I have two minutes and I'm like, oh, oh, I'm going to set a really nice trap. I'm setting a really nice trap here. It's kind of, I mean, it's kind of a trap. He, he's not going to fall into it because he's strong. I'm going to play rook b1, and when he takes my bishop, now I'm going to take, and I'm just advancing. And if he doesn't take my bishop, if he plays I don't know what, uh, then I'm going to play bishop b6. So let's say g5, I'm going to play bishop b6, and I'm, I'm going to try to win the game. Uh, and then he took my pawn, and I was like, oh, what an idiot. Like, he fell for my trap. The trap is that I play rook to e1, I'm attacking his bishop. His knight is behind the bishop, and his knight is protecting d4. So I'm going to fork him as long as I get rid of his knight. He can't do anything about it. Yeah, except I... Like, I, I forgot about the thing that I literally just had in my brain. 
So this game, I was just trying to lose. Uh, I, I was trying to snatch a defeat from the jaws of a draw. I was better for like two moves, but it wasn't anything crazy. I, I did make a nice comeback, but I really underestimated my position according to the computer. But anyway, rook h3, bishop h2, I'm just two pawns down. I'm just two pawns down. Um, and I'm threatening his bishop. I can't take his rook. Uh, the only way to save is to go here. Except it's not. I had a feeling there was something better. Rook e3, as you see from the eval, is not the move. I thought it was the best move. Best move is knight g5. It's a pretty nasty move. Uh, point being, you just guard the bishop. And if I try to take the bishop, and then I try to go here, you give up the rook as well, and you are just two pawns up. This is an easy win for black. You bring the king, you bring the pawns, you win. Uh, but I didn't see that uh, during the game. I actually thought the only move was rook to e3. I also thought about something like bishop d5. Uh, but he went here, and we traded... I gave him a check. I gave him a check to control access to the pawn on the outskirts of the board. And right away, I'm thinking, oh, I might not lose. Because even if you're down a pawn in a, in a minor piece endgame, if you're down one pawn, it's probably 99% the draw. Because you can always give up your pawn uh, for the, your piece for the pawn and it's insufficient checkmating material. Sometimes even being down two pawns is a draw because of a fortress, because the pawns are too far apart, because whatever opposite colored bishops so at this point i'm feeling good my time is not feeling great though uh he goes bishop c2 i go here he goes after my pawn and here it's just a draw i can probably just play bishop b4 and then after bishop b5 and e2 it's probably a draw this is probably just an opposite colored bishop fortress the point is that i basically just do nothing like, let's say he just pushes all his pawns. Um, oh, no, apparently this is bad. So how do I draw this? I have to play g3. Okay, sure. So I play g3. No, this is just losing. Okay, maybe I keep the bishop here. No, is this also just losing? Okay, then I guess this is just losing. I think if the pawns are sufficiently far apart, it should be a win in opposite colored bishops. But okay, the engine might, might not be on a full depth. Anyway, point is, I didn't want to rush into an endgame down two pawns unless I was 100% sure that it was a draw. So instead of that, I kept my bishops on the board, and I just brought my king to the pawn. Now, again, king bishop pawn versus king knight two pawns is, uh, is going to be a draw. Uh, he goes here. I pin him. And then I threaten the trade of a bishop because I'm going to win the pawn. And here, I just don't let his king escape the pin. So now he's completely paralyzed. Uh, I have the constant threat of playing king e2. And I'm literally just going to shuffle back and forth for the entire endgame. He cannot move anything. Which is why, in this position, he forces this and we now have this endgame. Now, the only way to lose this with white is to... Trade the bishop for the knight at the wrong moment. Uh, somehow lose your pawn. Run your king too far forward. And then, you know, like, there are a million ways to draw this. Uh, probably I can even run my king, like, to h2. Put the pawn on g3. And just vibe. But uh, the better way to do this is to go here. And now his king has difficulties getting closer. Uh, and I decided here I would keep my king active. So in the center, as best as I could. And what I would do is I would keep a distant defense. So I would keep distant defense with my bishop. I would threaten this pawn when necessary. And my king would stay out here actively so that his king can never get across. Uh, he kept trying to win because he's within his right. And um, we shuffled. We shuffled. You'll notice, again, I'm, I'm just moving my bishop. I'm attacking the pawn when necessary. I'm not letting his king in. Uh, we shuffled. We shuffled. We shuffled. And uh, he accidentally walked into this position for a third time. So what's funny is that I had to claim a repetition. He was not accepting a draw offer because, I don't know, he was being kind of, I don't know. <laughs> I, he's within his right, but at some point after like 30 moves, I guess theoretically, maybe he thought I would like have a heart attack or, you know. Uh, so the position repeated on move 70. 
So we had this position on move 70. Then we shuffled, 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 and then move 80, we had the position. So it was just a slightly different move. Uh, and then move 88. So over the course of, uh, of 18 different moves, we got the same position three times, which is kind of funny. But there is a rule in chess. You don't just have to shuffle back and forth. You can repeat. This. So you actually have to be vigilant because if I wasn't vigilant, I would have played this game for another hour. Um, and I drew. So I still I haven't lost. As of round seven uh, in the Madrid Chess Festival, I have uh, now I'm up to five points. Uh, and um, in the last two games, I'm playing against Julio Suarez, an international master uh, rated 2477, also with five points. He's having a great tournament. And in the last round, I'm playing the youngest guy. I think he's like 15 years old, teenager uh, from northern Spain, uh, Basque, I think it's called. And uh, he's quite strong, so he's in third place. Uh, so it's going to be a, a fun final two rounds. This game was all over the place. I'm not happy with many, many, many components of this game, and yet I didn't lose. So I could have absolutely lost the game after blundering. Bishop before we gauge through is a horrendous blunder. Played a couple of really stupid moves, but then I woke up and then I played well. And I'm happy I'm not like quitting on the game and whatever, and I'm like fighting and that's everything very good. But yeah, I would like to do a little bit better. Two more rounds to go. Uh, do the Chester Community Challenge and get out of here.